The Kodak Instamatic N2 Super 8 camera was introduced in 1965 alongside Kodak's new movie film format, Super 8. The camera features a fixed focus Kodak XNR lens with f-stops from 2.2 to 23. On the side of the camera you will find an exposure guide and a film counter which on this camera starts at 50 and moves down to zero. The camera has a simple viewfinder that is not adjustable in any way. On the bottom of the camera is a standard quarter 20 tripod socket. On the other side of the camera is a window through which you can see if a film cartridge is loaded. Currently one is not loaded. By the way, the aperture in this camera is really interesting looking. It's like a cat's eye or something. It's kind of fun just to watch it open up and stop down. On top of the camera is the shutter release button and a switch that allows you to lock the shutter release button so that the camera does not run accidentally. Or the switch can be set to lock the shutter release in the run position by holding the shutter release down while sliding the lock switch into the rear position. The camera will continue to run until you slide the lock switch back forward. The camera comes with a metal key which, if you're using tungsten balanced film indoors, you will insert into the top of the camera in this slot and it will move the daylight filter out of the way. If you're using daylight balanced film, the Super 8 cartridge will prevent the daylight filter from being in place when the cartridge is inserted. On the bottom of the camera is a slot in which a coin can be inserted to open the battery cover. A nickel works good. I've already loaded four AA batteries. Now let's check to see if the camera runs. Sounds good. But what if your camera is not working like it should? Actually this camera had an issue where it would run normally for a few seconds and then it would start to squeal and uh, the motor didn't seem to be turning. Well, fortunately you can lubricate this camera and that will probably take care of the problem. Just remove these two screws in the battery compartment and you'll be able to open the case. After removing the two screws, just open the case a little bit as if there were a hinge at the top of the case and slide it back and forth a little bit and it'll come loose. Once the case is open, this is what it should look like. Just apply a lubricant of your choice sparingly on metal on metal contact points and that should get you up and running normally again. I used a small amount of Nye clock oil and my camera's working fine now. Now let's load some film. On the top of this camera, there's a little button. You wanna press this down and while holding it down, slide the film door open. I'll be shooting this new Kodak Ektachrome 100D that I got from the Film Photography Project. And since I've never used this camera before, just to make sure, I'm going to check to see if it's working properly by marking a little X on the film. I'll insert the cartridge into the camera and run the motor for a few seconds and then take out the cartridge and see if the X is still there. Okay, good. The X is gone so it looks like this camera is working properly.
Since this camera is manual, you will need a light meter or a light meter app, like this one which is called My Light Meter Pro. Just set the ISO to match that of your film. Since I'm using Ektachrome 100D, I would select 100 and then take a reading by hitting the measure button. Now just set your camera's aperture to the number that lines up with 1 30th of a second, which in this case is f5.6. Actually, the frame rate of a Super 8 camera is typically 18 frames per second, which is about 1 40th of a second. But that's close enough to 1 30th of a second that we can just go by that and we'll be fine. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.